So it's important to talk about how, given some rings we have, how we can construct new rings from old rings. And in this video, I want to talk about the ring of matrices. So in linear algebra and also in, in group theory in this lecture series, we've talked a lot about matrices, groups of matrices. We can talk about groups of matrices under addition. We can talk about groups of non-singular matrices under multiplication. But if we combine matrix addition and multiplication together, we can actually form rings of matrices. So for example, if you take the set of n by n real matrices or the set of n by n complex matrices, these will make rings under the usual matrix addition and matrix multiplication. Uh, these are also rings with unity since the identity matrix I sub n, so this would be the, the matrix with ones along the diagonals and then zeros everywhere else, right? The identity matrix is given that name because it's the multiplicative identity. And therefore, these rings of matrices, the real matrices and complex matrices, these are rings with unity. On the other hand, though, these rings are not commutative since matrix multiplication is non-commutative. If I just choose two arbitrary matrices, we cannot expect that A times B is equal to B times A. Now, there are some special cases that... Um, a times B is equal to B times A with matrices here. When we say something like non-commutative, what we're saying is, is we're not saying it's never commutative. It just means there's no guarantee of, commu of commutivity here. Uh, there are, and, and, and for matrices, there are some matrices for which A times B does not equal B times A. It's, it's easy to find this. If you just pick two random matrices, you most likely will find out that they do not commute with each other. So these are non-commutative uh, rings with unity. But matrix rings are very important uh, rings to study in ring theory. In fact, if you have any ring whatsoever, because there's nothing particularly special about the ring of real numbers or complex numbers here, if R is any ring, then we can form the matrix ring, which will denote M sub N by N of R to be the set of all N by N matrices with entries coming from the number R, uh, from the ring R. Now, addition of matrices is defined analogously to where terms are added together component-wise, okay? So, for example, if we have any ring, you know, we'll, we'll do two by two matrices, for example. So you have any ring, A, B, C, D, we'll do something like that. I'll call it like A1, B1, C1, D1. If you add this to the, ma to the matrix A2, B2, C2, D2, where here we're assuming that A, I, B, I, C, I, and D, I, these are all just elements of a ring. When it comes to adding the matrices together, well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna add together the one, one position, so you get A1 plus A2. You add together the, the one, two position, so you get B1 plus B2. You're gonna add together the two, one position, which you get C1 plus C2. And you're gonna add together the two, two position, which is D1 plus D2, like so. In which case, to add together matrices just by component-wise, you just have to add together the components. You have to add together the A's, the B's, the C's, and the D's. And so if you want to construct matrix addition, all that requires of your scalar is that you can add scalars. If you can add scalars, you can add matrices. Great. Rings have addition, so we can add together uh, the we can add together the, the matrices. Now, what if we want to think about like multiplication? What does it mean to multiply together two matrices? Well, by the usual rules of, mul of matrix multiplication, we take like the first row times the first column, this finger multiplication here. You're going to get A1, A2 plus B1, C2. Then you would take the first row times the second column. You're going to end up with A1, B2 plus B1, D2. Then you're going to take the second row, first column. You end up with C1, A2 plus D1, C2. And then lastly, you can take the second row, times the second column, you're gonna end up with C1, B2 plus D1, D2. If you follow the usual rules of matrix multiplication, you would end up with this product. Now this right here works for any ring because in order to do this product, if you take a row times a column, we have to be able to multiply together elements, right? We have an A1 times an A2, we have to know what that means. We have to have a B1 times a C2. We have to multiply and then we have to add, which in a ring, we can multiply and add. So in a ring, if our scalars are from that ring, then we can multiply together matrices. Now, I have to caution you here that the ring might be non-commutative, okay? The, 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 the elements themselves might not commute. We know that matrices in general don't commute, but what if the scalars themselves don't commute? Well, that's okay, 
Because when it comes to this, when these when we come to these products, notice how it's always one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. You always, when you have your product, you always have the scalar from the first matrix times the scalar from the second matrix, plus a product where you have a first scalar, second scalar, plus a product from a first scalar, second scalar. Um, this example, I did two by two matrices, but you can see how very naturally this could be brought into three by three, four by four, any n by n matrix. So even in a non-commutative setting, we can make matrix multiplication be well-defined. Just be very cautious of the order of operations here. Um, if the ring R is a ring with unity, then, then um, this matrix ring will have unity as well because it'll just be the identity matrix in the usual sense. So if R is a ring with unity, then this will be a ring then the matrix ring will be a ring with unity. Now, even if the ring though, R is commutative, if you have, if N is greater than one, that is you have two by two, three by three, four by four, um, your matrix ring is not gonna be commutative, even if the ring is. But important to emphasize here that the matrix ring is well-defined, even if the ring is not commutative. Only thing we require for the ring is that the addition makes an abelian group and that we also need multiplication to be associative and distributive. We don't need commutivity, we don't need identities. If you have a multiplicative unity, then so will the matrix ring, uh, but commutivity will never be guaranteed when you have matrix rings.